I recently returned from a two week trip to Scotland where I was running my autumn workshops in the Torridon area. Now we had a fantastically diverse couple of weeks with some really good results. But we also had some very interesting conversations over coffee and shortbread, but there was one chat in particular that was prompted me to make this quick video. So we were talking about post-processing and one guy was explaining how he wanted his images to pop and have him impact. So I was after some advice on how to achieve this in the editing suite. Now I hear this quite a lot and even from relative newcomers to landscape photography where they seem to put a lot of emphasis on the desire to be a skillful editor. Now, putting Photoshop high up on the priority list at such an early stage in your landscape photography kind of troubles me a little bit, so I wanted to explain why. Firstly, I should say that I absolutely do not see myself as being particularly skillful at photo editing. As I've hinted at many times before, I hate sitting at the desk. The thought of spending hours editing photos just makes my toes curl, but I'm really quite content with the results that I get. You know, if your desire is to constantly tweak and create digital masterpieces, then go ahead. But if like me, you'd rather prioritize making the most of your time out in the field, then I really do think that your processing can be quite quick and simple. But I also feel that it's highly beneficial for your approach to come from an informed place that demonstrates a clear understanding of your intention when you actually took the photograph. So let's consider some of the things that can go into creating a great photograph, such as discovering and scouting a location, uh, finding a scene or subject, reading the light, balancing the light, colour and form and shadow in the scene, understanding the purpose, concept or emphasis of an image, perhaps composing to capture a feeling, story or experience, and then the technical execution and post-processing to achieve a vision and perhaps continue a thought process and creative thread which informs and gives structure to the processing decisions that we make. So when I look at my own work, the processing stage is such a tiny portion compared to everything else that preceded it. It's years of trying to become a better craftsman in the field, to understand the subject and its purpose, to fine tune an aesthetic and accept that there's no such thing as a quick win or a shortcut. So if you want your own processing to be simple and well informed, then just work your socks off at trying to capture nature at its best. But, and this is a big but, I really do think it helps massively to have a genuine connection with what you're shooting so you can understand and visualize the end result. So rather than forcing an aesthetic on a scene with a Lightroom preset, we can adopt an approach that is empathetic towards a scene and does justice to our own experience. So going back to my conversation with a client on the workshop who wanted his images to pop and have impact, ask yourself if that's the basic aim for every photo that we take, then are we perhaps missing the point as to why we took it in the first place? Does the image even suit having punch? Perhaps a more soft approach to highlight a subtle quality or a delicate mood would be more apt? Or was the experience dramatic and intense? and so a more edgy processing style might be appropriate. But this is why I always talk about empathy and connection in the field because the last thing that we want to do is cut the creative thread at the last moment and apply a processing formula that just simply isn't appropriate. This is all part of the, the learning experience though, you know, trying different environments, subjects and techniques until our style slowly falls into place and we're more organically drawn to the things that makes us tick. And then we can filter out all the techniques and effects that just aren't applicable to our own personal vision. Of course, we should be free to explore whatever creative avenue we please when it comes to processing, but all I can do is share my own approach and beliefs, which I do find to be quite simple and purposeful, but certainly very much reliant upon trying to capture Mother Nature at her best, and certainly try my best to better my eye as a photographer too. So I want to take a look at a photograph that I took in Scotland and then hopefully that will illustrate some of the things that I'm talking about. So here's a completely untouched raw file of a photograph that I captured in Scotland recently. Now we just enjoyed a fantastic morning at the Lockside where we had some glorious mist, light, mood and frost. And we were just on our way back to the car and decided to pop into this woodland. Now by this point the light wasn't as good as it was and the mist had dissipated out the woodland, but I think it was still clinging to the mountainside, which has just helped to soften the light a little bit and given a result that I'm really quite happy with, to be honest. So just to give you an idea of some of the other compositional components, we've got the framing on the left of this lovely pine tree, just ever so slightly softened by this splattering of silver birch leaves. We've got the framing on the right hand side with this cluster of pine trees. It's a little bit heavier over here, but I think it's successfully softened 
by this foreground silver birch and this lovely splattering of golden leaves. And just off centre to the left we've got this lovely texture of the pine bark here. And as with a lot of my photographs, I really do like a central component. So we've got this lovely gnarly character, this pine tree here with a snap branch and the remains of another pine tree here. And it gives it that element of melancholy, which I quite like. And it just offers a bit of depth and that point of interest for the eye to travel to in the scene. And then just filling in this space over here, we've got another cluster of pine trees, which I don't feel is a distraction. It's just another component which allows the eye to travel around the scene. And actually just off on the right hand side, we've got a client's tripod that belongs to Steve. Um, I was too polite to ask a client to move his tripod, so that will just have to come out in Photoshop afterwards. So this had been captured ever so slightly on the cooler side because I really wanted to preserve some of these cooler tones through the tree bark, which offer a fantastic contrast against all the lovely little delicate warm silver birch leaves which are flowing really nicely through the scene and then we've got the green across the bottom in the heather and then the green in the pine needles at the top. So I won't go through each individual stage of the processing, I just really want to give you an overview so I can demonstrate how simple and straightforward the processing can be if we have a very sound starting point. So this is my initial process of the raw file which might look a little bit on the flat side to start with but all will be revealed. So rather than doing anything that's over complex, I just really need to think about well, what does the image actually need? And I relate that back to my thought processes and intent when I actually captured the photograph. So my memory of the morning was that it was very calm and peaceful and there was this feeling of this warm light coming into the woodland from the left hand side. So I really wanted to kind of get that warmth to come through in the image. So I've just started off by increasing the temperature ever so slightly. But I don't want to push that too far because I don't want to lose some of these cooler tones in the tree bark here. But then I brought down the highlights globally just to get some of these sky spots under control and also the light that's hitting the side of the bark. I've just lifted the shadows just to flatten things out a little bit to start with. And then as with pretty much every woodland photograph that I take, I've reduced the clarity because too much clarity in a woodland image can make start to make things look a little bit too brittle. In this instance, I've actually dropped the texture and the, added some negative dehairs too. Again, just to really enhance that soft and inviting feel. I wanted something that's almost slightly ethereal. I've added a little bit of contrast just by increasing the lights globally and dropping the darks ever so slightly. And then jumping down to HSL, I really wanted this flow of lovely delicate leaves to come through on the silver birch so I've increased the saturation of the yellow and then counteracted that by dropping the saturation of the green just to kind of make that yellow show a little bit more in the scene. And then in split toning because I've increased the warmth overall what I wanted to do is just add a little bit of coolness to the shadows again to make sure that we preserve this tonal contrast between the pine trees and the lovely delicate warm autumn colours through the rest of the scene. Um, so globally to the image that is pretty much it at this stage. I've added a couple of local adjustments. So I've got some radial filters. I've got one in the middle here. I do this quite frequently whereby I increase the whites in the central part of the image just to really emphasise that feeling of light that's coming in from the left hand side filling that space and making this distant subject shine and it just really helps to draw the eye into the centre of the image. I've actually painted the same effect over on the left hand side just a little bit um, just to lift those silver birch leaves against those lovely cool straight pine trunks. And just this little bit here I've lifted the shadows just to make sure that this distant tree isn't too dark and too heavy in the scene. So in terms of initial adjustments to the raw file, that is it. The only other thing that I've done, apart from remove the tripod in Photoshop, is that I've taken the image into Photoshop and added an Orton effect, which has given me this. I won't go through how to achieve the Orton effect because I've covered that in a previous video, which I'll link to below. But what I will say is that I don't automatically add this effect to every single woodland photograph. I only use it to enhance a quality which already exists in the original image. So when we look at woodland and all those lovely textures and detail, the delicate quality of trees like the silver birch and the lovely subtle tones and we combine that with a nice soft light, we already start to get a painterly feel. So we're only using the autumn effect to enhance that feeling. And I think in this instance it's worked quite well to give that richness to the lovely golden leaves flowing through the scene. We've got that 
warm, inviting, slightly enchanted and ethereal quality. But this has pushed the autumn effect as far as I possibly want to go with it. And it's been enhanced a little bit more with that negative clarity. And I've only got the effect at 10% opacity here. So you can see that there is, it really is just enhancing some lovely delicate qualities which already exist. But with every processing decision that we've made here, it's all been driven by the thought process intent and the vision that we had in the field to achieve an end result, which is really kind of captures the very essence of the experience and the feeling and emotion that I really wanted to get across. So to summarize, if we strive to craft good compositions of great moments in nature and accept that sometimes these moments are quite infrequent, if we have a sound thought process and emotional connection to the moment which informs our vision and intent, then perhaps we'll better ourselves as photographers and the post-processing can, if you want it to, be a simple and structured workflow that continues the creative thread that started from the moment you stepped outside. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you found it useful or insightful. What I might do is do a future video where I talk about some of the other photographs that I captured in Scotland. But for now, thank you very much for watching. And as always, I hope to see you for the next one.